Welcome to the Exploring Potential podcast, where we delve into the realm of unique and novel ideas within organizations. Join us as we uncover the driving force behind innovation and success by engaging in thought-provoking conversations and stories with some of the brightest minds in various fields. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us and welcome to the Exploring Potential podcast. I'm your host, Brett King. I'm really excited for today's episode. This episode will be a bit unique in that it it is going to be part of a mini-series on building trust within our organizations and with our customers. We've got an expert guest who will be joining us both today and a few additional times to talk about some of the key aspects of building trust and specific tactics for how we can utilize this concept to improve our businesses. Simply put, Lack of trust can be expensive for our organizations. Where there's low trust, everything takes more time, it's more stressful in terms of an environment. But for the trusted brand, people pay more, they come back, they tell others, and the internal company culture can thrive. Today we're going to focus in specifically on one of the key pillars of trust, which is consistency. Its impact on trust and its implications, good and bad, for our organizations. Now, before we fully dive in, I today's show sponsor. Today's episode of the Exploring Potential podcast is proudly presented by Cinetrain, providing the highest quality employee training, onboarding, and development solutions for cinemas across the U.S., Canada, and Latin America. Cinetrain helps cinemas attract and retain top talent, standardize onboarding and training, and increase revenue while decreasing operational costs. You can learn more at Cinetrain.com. Now, I'm thrilled to welcome to the show certified business and executive coach and director of sales at Cinetrain, Mike Vianne. Over the span of 30 years, Mike has held senior executive roles across the entertainment industry, including Warner Brothers, Regal Entertainment Group, Comscore, and STX Entertainment, where he rose to co-president of theatrical distribution. In September of 2023, Mike launched his own business and is a certified business coach, executive coach, trusted edge leadership partner, and an international coaching federation member. Mike joined the Cinetrain team in January of this year as director of sales and is an integral part of Cinetrain's ongoing development of new employee training and advanced leadership programs for cinemas across the U.S. Mike lives in Southern California has been married for 25 years and has three children. Mike, welcome to the show. It's so great to have you here today. Brett, thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to be here and thank you for that kind introduction. Makes me realize how long how long I've been in this industry. That's just experience, Mike. <laughs> there you go. I like no, that. we're we're really glad to have you here and and uh, yeah, excited for our conversation. Excited for this to be a series. It's something we haven't done on this before and uh you and I have had so many wonderful conversations and our travels together and, and separate from that, I think it's just teed up to, to add a lot of value for our, our audience. So I really appreciate your time. Well, now, great uh, to, yeah, glad to be here, Brett. Awesome. Could you, before we dive in, Mike, would you mind just giving us a quick background of your impressive career journey and what brought you to where you are now? Sure. So, you know, my my dad was in the industry so when i was growing up he worked for a company that a lot of people might remember called general cinema and when i was a kid his office was actually in one of the general cinema movie theaters and i remember during the summertime going with him to work and just while he was in the office i i went and watched star wars for the 37th time and just kept going and going and just fell in love with the theatrical experience And so as I was coming out of college and deciding what I wanted to do, um, I just sort of happened into taking a temp job at Warner Brothers before I was going to go back and get my MBA. And um, it was a really nice moment at Warner's where about five, yeah, five or six months into that temp job, uh, I was approached with, hey, do you want to take a sales opportunity in our Chicago office? And 23 years later, I was still at Warner Brothers. Um, I fell in love with the industry. I believe in the theatrical experience. 
when I got to uh, working with Comscore, I got much more into the analytical side of the business and, and running their, their global uh, sales and revenue team. But one thing struck me, and maybe it was just I was getting a little bit older. Uh, I, had, I had an epiphany, if you want to call it one day, where I said, you know what? I want to do something more. I want to give back. When I look back at my career, it was not only about, it was like never, hey, I released the Batman movies or the Harry Potter movies or all the Clint Eastwood movies, or I exceeded sales revenue targets. For me, it was I led and developed sales teams and I coached and I mentored individual team members to become greater organizational contributors and to become better both personally and professionally. And I'm telling this story to someone and they said, you know, there's a business in that. <laughs> and I said, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that. Long story short, I became a, a certified business and executive coach, I, continuing my certification process you know, through, through different outlets. And when you and I met and I had the opportunity to join Cinetrain, it was like, holy cow, here we go. My love of cinema, my experience in sales, and my passion for wanting to be able to teach employees through a training process and leadership programs that will ultimately make the exhibition community stronger. That, 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 that's, that tells you exactly why I am where I were, why I am where I am today. It makes perfect sense. I mean, the journey puts you right, right here. And yeah, uh, yeah if, if I could, I mean, we, you and I hit it off very quickly. Um, we, we have a lot of shared values, uh, shared passion for the industry and, you know, shared values in terms of our passion for developing people and, you know, the improvement of, of theatrical exhibition across the board. So it, it was, it's pretty easy to see um, why we, why we connected so quickly and easily. And, I think we're both proud of the fact that a couple of our actual clients had been the ones to connect us yeah. um, in seeing the the similarities there. So, uh, yeah, I'm uh, you know I'm so thrilled that you're on the Cinetrain team, Mike, and even more thrilled that we're able to have conversations like this that other people can benefit from as well. Absolutely. So, Mike, let's tee this up. Why are we doing a full series on trust? What is so significant about this concept? So, you know, it, it, it starts with me thinking about a call I got several weeks ago from a friend of mine who's starting a new job. She called me and she was admittedly nervous about the new job. And at one point said, I just hope everybody likes me. And I paused for a moment and I said, you know what? That is not the question that they're going to be asking themselves. They're not gonna wonder whether or not they like you. They're all gonna be asking themselves, can they trust you? Hmm. Everything of value from the greatest of organizations to our closest relationships are built on one thing and it's trust. A lot of people believe that, that trust is this ambiguous, complex idea that you either have or you don't have. But what we know is that trust is the leading indicator in success. And it's something that can be actively built. And that's, that's a really important point. Now, just the other day, I was reading um, an annual report from the, uh, the Trust Edge Leadership uh, Institute, where they do a lot of research and analysis. And I saw that the number one reason that people want to work for an organization is actually trusted leadership. When you have that trust within the organization and that trusted leadership, you see an increase in output, innovation, productivity, morale, loyalty, and let's not forget retention and revenue, right? Now, at the same time that we have that increase in trust, we see a decrease in some things. We see a decrease in problems, a decrease in skepticism, a decrease in attrition, and a decrease in the amount of time that it takes to go to market. Um, now, when we talk about trust, creating that trust with our customers, one of the most powerful stories I can tell to show you why trust is so 
significant is the story of CarMax. CarMax created their business by admitting that their industry had a huge problem. It was a trust issue. So although it seemed radical at the time, CarMax created a haggle-free pricing structure and a commission structure to try to eliminate the distrust and the general perception of a used car salesman, right? We all distrust, even that phrase, just, oh my gosh, we all cringe when we hear that. So they the eliminated that itself is like a meme. <laughs> right, right. So they also provided transparency in their pricing. They provided transparency in their, in their quality control of the used vehicles that they were selling to avoid that, you know, that worry about buying a lemon. And then they took it even a step further and they created a full money back five day return policy for cars to eliminate buyer's remorse. So wow. they took an industry that was marred with distrust and created trust and are now the leaders in the used car space. What they did was they created a consistent process that customers could rely on every time they went to a CarMax, regardless of where it was in the country. Right, right. It, it became repeatable. I I think there are a couple really critical things that, that you've said here. Um, the first really goes along with something you said near the beginning is that trust can be actively built. Yes. Right. And, and CarMax, that example is a wonderful example of this can be cultivated and, and actually built from scratch in an industry where mistrust is actually the most prevalent, I would say. Yeah. Um, and so I think that really helps drive that point that you made home that I want our listeners to, to really take that, like, no matter where your business is at, trust can be cultivated and built and rebuilt. And, you know, there's things that we can do proactively. The other Without things that, that really stood out to me about what you had just said were, you know, you really, you looked at it from two angles that I think will be a theme in our conversation, that there's, there's building trust internally for our people and, and our employees, and then there's building trust externally for our customers. And they're both equally important for different reasons. And so I just, I appreciated that you went there in, in terms of, you know, uh, where you went with your answer on that. And then yeah, well said. you had a... Thank you. I, that's just me borrowing your words. <laughs> um, but you 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 brought up a, a great point there at the end um, with the consistent process that they had created. I want to talk more about that and and really zero in on that. Why is consistency important in building trust? So I'm gonna I'm gonna start with a a, a story that brings me all the way back to my high school days, the glory days. <laughs> um, <laughs> We used to go out to lunch at least three or four times a week. We'd go into town to what was our favorite, you know, sandwich and pizza place. Um, and I would get the same sandwich almost every time I went there. That sandwich, every time I ordered it, the bread was toasted exactly the same way. The cheese was melted the exact same way. Just sitting here talking to you about it, I can kind of taste it and smell it as I'm telling you this story. That's how consistent they were in making that sandwich. But it, but it even went a step further because when I walked in, the owners greeted me. They knew who I was. They knew what I wanted. They made my sandwich that way every day. And I knew I could go there and get that same sandwich that I knew I loved in a comfortable, friendly environment. And that, that was like, there was so much trust, not only in the sandwich itself, but just in that business. And the reason I tell you that story, it's the little things done consistently that make the biggest difference, right? When we're consistent, trust has the chance to impact everything from clients to organizations, to communities, family, even ourselves. And, you know, whatever we do consistently as a person or as an organization is what we're trusted for. And by the way, that can be good or bad. Um, right. This morning, 
this morning I'm getting ready and I have the sports talk show on the TV in the background. And everybody is talking about how in baseball last year's Cy Young Award winner, Blake Snell, still doesn't have a team to play on this year. And everybody is just thinking to themselves, like, how can this be? He, he won the highest achievement award possible last year. Games are going on already. Spring training's in full swing. He's not signed. When I thought about it, it was very obvious to me. Last year, Blake Snell was one in six at the end of May before he went on that tear, which got him the award. If you look back at his previous years, he's been very, very up and down. In 2018, he had like something like a 1.49 ERA, unheard of. The next year, he was at 4.5. He's out there with his agent right now trying to get the highest possible value contract from a dollar amount along with you know, five, seven, eight, ten year contract. And that inconsistency is creating this mistrust from a baseball organization's perspective of what they're actually buying. So, you know, we right. just see this consistency everywhere we go, whether it's just listening to a sports show or talking about our favorite pizza place. Right. There's a, there's a, this reliability factor mm. of whether it's this restaurant, you know, you can go in and just know I'm going to get that, that sandwich that I'm craving. I'm going to get that slice of pizza that I'm craving and it's going to be exactly what I want. Or, you know, if you're yeah managing a baseball team, right? This is my reliable person. And if they're not reliable, you know, it goes back to what we talked about in the beginning. People will pay more for consistency because they know what they're getting. Absolutely. That's yeah. Well, let, let's flip that on its head okay. and say, what are the implications both internally with our people and externally with our guests? Because that's our theme. Mm. When we operate inconsistently, what, mm. what happens then? Right. So rhetorical question, what decreases trust or destroys trust? Inconsistency, right? We people trust sameness. It's, it's just, it's how we are. And, you know, consistency, inconsistency leads to a lack of trust, um, you know, both internally at our organizations and with guests. And it's a good time for me to now talk about two types of, of consistency. Okay, there's personal consistency and there's organizational consistency. Personal consistency is what creates our reputation. Organizational consistency is what makes our brand. It creates our brand. And so let's just talk about what brand is for a second. It's a person's perception uh, of, a, of a, a product or a service or an experience, right? So for the trusted brand, you said it now twice. People pay more. They come back. And here's the kicker. They tell others about it. Right? right. So it's huge right. for us to be consistent to create that trusted band, brand. Let, let's, let's focus on that for one second. Chick-fil-A, they, they outpace McDonald's by almost double on their annual per store revenue. They quadruple that of a KFC or a Burger King. And let's not forget, wow. Chick-fil-A is not open on Sunday. Yeah, right? they're doing it in one less day. Yes. So how do they do this? Well, there's been some recent research that can point to one of the reasons why moms are more likely to go to a Chick-fil-A because of the cleanliness of the bathrooms and the dining area. So mm. moms can bring their kids after school on weekends to any fast food restaurant but they trust the consistency of the cleanliness of a Chick-fil-A and that's where, <laughs> and that's where they want to go. Let's flip this over for one second back to our favorite industry, the theater space, right? One of the clients that we work with at Cinetrain is Warehouse Cinemas. We know that Warehouse Cinema strives to create moments worth remembering. It's one of their mission statements. 
create moments ver you know worth remembering part of that is having a ridiculously helpful staff right so people can go anywhere to see a movie just like they can go anywhere to have a burger or a sandwich but rich and his team are creating an experience what they're creating yes. is a consistent trusted experience so there you go inconsistency versus consistency and i'm going to load the deck because you know where i'm coming from with this and i know you come from the same angle here how can we what are some of the ways that our organizations can become more consistent like yeah. in in the warehouse situation how do we make sure the staff delivers that how does chick-fil-a make sure that everything is so clean right. you know what is what are the secrets to becoming more consistent in those areas yeah you know it i, I read a book recently called the e-myth revisited by michael gerber and he talks a lot about creating standardized procedures um, he talks about documenting processes um, and building a consistent system that can not only be taught but followed um, and this is where i can really jump in and start to talk about cinetrain again you and i both love the, the the theatrical experience we love the cinema industry but cinema owners are faced with two challenges right now first let's get people out of their homes right and then it's how do i get them to come to my specific theater and i think that you know training standardizes the guest experience and i kind of talked about this before with carmax it standardizes experience across the entire circuit well let's go back and talk about warehouse cinemas classic cinemas regardless of location you're going to get the same experience that's going to create trust that's going to create brand um you know this is this is where um we can talk about our training get arming managers with their ability to train and build that consistency provide team members with skill sets to become greater organizational uh contributors year after year after year and it reminds me when you ask about how can we do this it reminds me of the container store um a lot of mm. people talk about the container store and their approach to talent retention their approach to really, I guess what they call employee well-being. And what they do, their, their talent management system, it's conducted through these regular performance evaluations, continuous training and development programs, just like we talk about at Cinetrain and succession planning. What the result has been for the container store is higher levels of employee engagement and lower turnover rates. It, it, it's creating consistency at their store because of that. It, it guest experience is better, and this is exactly what you and I talk about when we want to work with Cinema Train and anybody in, in in the exhibition community. The Container Store provides over two hundred hours of training to their employees, and the industry standard is eight. So I really believe that when we go back to talking about how training can create an engaged employee, right, which is making them a stronger contributor. The Container Store CEO even said, through the right hiring process and training, you can turn one employee into three. And I believe, I believe that that's how organizations can become stronger, create this consistency and really build up their brand before anyone listening says 200 hours that's a complete waste of time nobody's going to want to go through that before we move on to to any questions that that you might have Brett, here's here's what i want to share with you there's two stats so trust outlook did some recent research and found that 70 76 percent of all employees believe that an ongoing training program would help them trust their employer more and then the second stat two-thirds of americans want to be trained in people skills 
not just technical skills. And again, this is really what Cinema Train tries to strive for when we're working with customers in the cinema space. Absolutely. Absolutely. Both of those, <clears throat> excuse me, areas are, are critical. And I think those are uh, especially learning more people skills and soft skills are some of the most overlooked subjects that, you know, our, our customer, our customers rather, our employees are, are yearning toward right. and would also help the organization. Um, but that's where, you know, often I'd say we see some of the biggest gaps is not supporting the, you know, especially in an industry just going along us talking about cinemas, especially in an industry that wants to promote from within, we encourage that, right? But there's there's typically what we run into is a lack of retooling, a lack of changing the skills that made them a great usher and developing the skills that make them a great leader. So I, I think that's critical. And I, I heard you say a couple of things that, you know, really help it boil down to, in terms of becoming more consistent, there's a level of standardization of expectations, of operations, of procedures, of processes. And then to ensure that standardization gets executed at a high level, there's got to be a training mechanism in place to support that. Is that a, is that a reasonable summary? You said it much better than me, but is that a reasonable summary? No, it's, a, it's very reasonable. And it's like I go back to what Michael Gerber was saying about a consistent system that can be taught and easily followed. There it is. Taught and easily followed. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Why, it, and we're, we're winding down here on this first one, and, and I already can't wait for the next installment of our series, but I, I want to ask, when we think about the leadership level, because we kind of started getting into like developing some of those skills, why is consistency so critical at the existing leadership level within an organization? Mm. Sure. So I'll start by going back to something I said right at the beginning of the show. And that is the fact that research shows that the number one reason that people want to work for organizations is trusted leadership. You know, and, and, mm. and leaders have to intentionally build trust each and every day. Um, and this comes through consistency and communication, consistency and character, right? Connection to your team and commitment to the business. And research has even showed that trust with leaders increases when they are transparent about their mistakes. Because now team members are feeling like, hey, we're all in this together. My leader, he or she can, can admit to me that they made a mistake but I'm understanding why we made that mistake and now we're all going to move forward together. And it creates this connection and increase in trust. You know, one of the things that I was just touching upon, which is also really important for leaders to do to create this trust and why it's so important. When there's change in an organization for whatever reason, it's really, really important for a leader to communicate the why. You know, both, both our customers and our employees understand that there's going to be change but they, they want to understand why there has to be change. You and I in our careers have probably always had uh, an instance where we've been told by one of our bosses to go do something. And if we don't understand the why, we can almost view it as a waste of our time. I don't understand why I'm doing this. I should be focusing, focusing on high value activities. What am I doing this for? But if I understand the why, that resistance to the change is overcome, and now I buy in, I trust why we're doing it, and I'm moving forward. I then sort of equate it to, I'm sure you've seen, and I'll ask you, when, when a new client comes on board with Cinetrain, if they explain to their team and their entire circuit of managers and general managers why Cinetrain's platform and resources are coming on board, I would imagine there's immediate buy-in, but if it's just thrown at them and said, hey, hey, you know, this is a new system you need to learn, for them, it's like, oh my gosh, another piece of technology, um, I, 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 something else I need to learn. This is going to be a burden on me. It's important to explain that why to create that buy-in, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, it, you're absolutely spot on. So, the, so I'm, yeah, I, I'm sitting here, Brett, I think it was two weeks ago, putting together a little deck that I was putting together for a presentation. 
and something popped up on my phone. It was, you know, just like one of those Google pops and it heard it do the bling. So I looked and it said in and out burgers, which out here in California is one of the top burger places. Oh, yeah. In and out burgers is now the number six best place to work in the United States. And it, it, it even made a big deal. Like it's better than Amazon. It's better than Google. It's better than Apple. So even though I was in the middle of my work, I clicked on it. I only had to read the first paragraph to understand why this had happened. It said in the first paragraph, 92% of employees, Glassdoor did this research. Um, they found 92% of employees at In-N-Out approved of and trusted billionaire owner, Lindsay Snyder. Lindsay wow. is the granddaughter of the original founders of In-N-Out. Her parents and now Lindsay have kept consistency. Now, not year over year, generation over generation. They even have something called In-N-Out University where they go to this university, not only to get wowed by how exciting it is to work at in and out but they are given the skill sets and the tools necessary to build on that consistency, not only from a leadership and a management level, Brett, but also down to the consistency of the burger and fries, right? Right, So all levels. I think simplifying your original question of like, why is it critical at the consistency, critical at the leadership level? It, it can be as simple as this. We want our leaders to show up the same way every day. And when they do, you see the difference, right? You see the, the trust at in and out I mean, that's significant. That's a huge, right. huge trust factor. Right. And you would, yeah. I mean, that's a huge stat. The other piece to this is, you know, we're all in constant situations with change, every industry. And what I heard you say is, you know, if you have a trusted leader who's consistent, then change management becomes easier as well. And you you use the example of, you know, with Cinetrain, you're, you're spot on, right? We always, so, so we're very big on partnering with our clients, right? We don't just shove the software at them and say, all right, good luck, you know. We work with them for exactly that reason. Because what we saw is sometimes if it's not rolled out in, in a, a proper way, there could be some pushback from employees who have been there for three years and say, why do I need new training? You know, what is this all about, right? And so we'll recommend these, you know, this is how we announce it. It will walk through the steps. This is how you want to roll it out where you're going to get the most buy and you're going to make, make sure that people feel like their fingerprints are on this program who need to be. But that can only occur if you're taking those steps and if you've been a consistent leader and creating that trust and taking those extra steps, right? If, unless, you know, to your point, if they're just shoving it out there, it's not going to be taken as well. Um, you know, it, in fact, could be even worse. It could be completely rejected, right? Because yeah. it's just like top down, there's no consistency, there's no trust. So that all allows for a greater change management approach. And you can't name an organization that's not going through some sort of changes, you know, all the time, especially in the uh, theatrical industry. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very true. And you know what, what's funny, Brett, is you might remember at the beginning uh, of the podcast, I said, a friend of mine called me and I said, they're not asking themselves whether or not they like you. They're, they're asking themselves, can they trust you? I took that article on in and out and I, and I, I, uh, I text it over to her and I got a text message back probably within an hour that said, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all it took. Yeah. That's all it took. Yeah. Cause it is, it's, it's, it's one of those things that's uh, simple, but not easy. Right. You know, it's, it's, we can, we can grasp it, but we've got to show up and, and do the work consistently in order to be that trusted source. That's exactly right. I love it. I love it. Mike, is there anything else that I didn't give you the opportunity to speak on, whether uh, regarding trust or consistency that you can think that our, uh, that our audience might benefit from? Well, you know, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll just kind of end with a couple of thoughts on, on, on both. Um, 
Look, every interaction that we have with our customers and our employees, we are either increasing or decreasing trust in that moment, right? No matter what we think, every interaction that we have. Trust is not stated, it's earned. It's really, really important for us to know that, but it goes back to the fact that we said that, you know, trust can be actively built. And it's really important for us to be able to recognize that. We talked about how a lack of trust is our greatest expense. With, without trust, things cost more, they take more time, and they are, of course, a lot more stressful. Here's a, a quick little simple example of how stressful a lack of trust can be. Something we do in our everyday lives. Think about sending a text message to somebody you're tr you trust versus sending a text message to somebody you don't trust. One is incredibly simple, fast, and you really don't have to overthink it. The other one is really slow, deliberate, and stressful. And that's, it just right. immediately shows you the difference between tr having trust or not having trust. Um, look, it's trust is the confident belief, right? In, in a person or a product or an organization. But I think what I'd want business owners to understand is that the trust edge is the competitive advantage that you gain and your business gains when people confidently believe in you and your business. So I'll, I'll end it by saying this, creating and maintaining trust through consistency is not easy, but it leads to lasting success. And I think that's, you know, the best way I can summarize it all. I think you summarized it brilliantly. Um, the, it, I think the important piece of this is we all have this opportunity to build trust. It can be built. It can be uh, uh, amplified. It can be changed. Nothing is set in stone. So no matter where you're starting from, it can be created and and manufactured to a point where you, to your using your words you know there's lasting benefits to it mm -hmm. and we've talked at length about those benefits so that is uh to just kind of give a teaser trust is going to be the overall theme of this mini series that mike and i are going to be hosting and uh you know today we really honed in on consistency but we're going to definitely touch on other subjects that go along with trust so if you buy into this idea uh, I'm just excited to tease that there's more coming uh, with regard to this. Mike, thank you so much for taking the time out to to speak with me today. This is the part of the show where I'd like to give uh, just pause and give you a few moments to plug whatever is most important to you right now. Could be a company initiative idea, you name it. The floor is yours. I, I'd love to give you that opportunity. You know, I, I think just the, the only thing I'd, I'd say on that is I, I truly and honestly believe that in any industry, you and I are focused in on, 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 the, on the movie industry, right? Specifically movie theaters and cinemas. But I, I truly believe that any small to mid-sized business, I believe that regardless of industry, they are absolutely positively the most integral part of a healthy economy both overall and within that industry. And I think paying attention to building trust through what you and I will talk about, the eight pillars of trust and how these eight pillars really can, at the end of the day, overcome any leadership or organizational issue. I think if, if people pay attention to that, um, they could become, they can not only create a stronger business, they'll create a stronger community and a stronger industry. And I hope you and I can impact that. Um, I think one of the things that I'd like to say to everybody is, yes, we're going to do this podcast series, but you and I are also available to visit people in person and do everything from a half day to a full day workshop where we could really get into the nitty gritty of this and help people solve organizational problems. So I appreciate you giving me the chance to say that. And I thought that this was this was a great episode, Brett. So thanks for having me again. 
Of course. Yeah. Thank you. And and thanks for that plug as well. We are absolutely available. And if you can't tell, we're passionate about it. <laughs> uh, so so do call on us uh, to, to come in and, and make a difference for you. Yeah, Mike, this was a fantastic episode. Thank you so much for taking the time today. It is always a pleasure when you and I get to just sit down and have a conversation around these topics. I always, and, and today is no exception, I leave our conversations feeling energized and inspired, and I have no doubt that uh, our audience is, is feeling the same right now. And I also want to take a moment to thank our listeners and our viewers for tuning in to today's episode. Don't forget to please like and subscribe if you are getting value from this content. You can subscribe on Apple, Spotify, or wherever it is that you get your podcasts these days. Please give us a rating and a review while you're there. Let us know how we're doing. You can also watch, like, and subscribe on YouTube. Visit exploringpotential.com for more information on our team and the work we do. And visit Cinetrain.com for more information on what we do specifically in the cinema space and to say hi to Mike. And with that, I will let you all go. Have a wonderful rest of your day and thanks for tuning in.